What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, so today we've got a question on how to apply draft to non-planar faces. So uh, Diamond Dog here is trying to do what I think is a squeaky toy or some type of character. Uh, he's applied a draft analysis in this picture, and we can see that uh, the red side and the green side, which are areas where he both has uh, adequate draft, are separated by this little yellow line here. And that's what he's trying to remove because that yellow line is a warning from SolidWorks saying he doesn't have adequate draft for whatever his settings that he put in uh, are. So we're um, going to look at two things in this problem today. Uh, the first is in the comments, lots of people were suggesting just to cut away that material. We're gonna look at that and why I don't think that's uh, the most ideal suggestion. And then we're gonna look at the way that I would um, probably model this myself and recommend for a uh, diamond dog to uh, give it another shot. So uh, let's get into the model and we'll see what we're looking at and how it goes. Hello, my name is Josh and I'm an engineer with Forge Product Development. Forge helps clients start and grow their businesses by providing affordable access to effective engineering resources. Monday through Friday, we offer a free engineering helpline live on our social media platforms where we help answer questions from people just like you. The clips that follow were taken from one of those sessions. I hope you find it useful and enjoy. All right, so this is just my mock-up of a similar design. Um, we're going to look at the first scenario, which is uh, cutting away the material that does not have adequate draft. So we can see how we built this model. I just built a quarter of it because it's symmetric. So we're trying to save on work. Um, and if we look at this in a draft analysis, we can confirm that there's not adequate draft along this edge here, which is going to be our parting line. This front plane is going to be our parting plane. Um, so as you can see, the yellow is showing up. If we were to have mirrored this part, there would be a red half that would also have an equal amount of yellow on it. And that's the, the, what we're trying to remove in, in, this, uh, in this situation. So we're going to, I just revolved the quarter of it. And then one way to cut it away, to cut away that excess material or the non-drafted material and ensure you have the correct draft would just to be to use that parting line edge and you're going to extrude a surface. You're gonna use the draft feature on extruded surface and apply whatever your draft angle is. Then you can use that surface as a surface cut. Delete the surface to keep your model clean. And you can see here that that surface now, we cut everything on the outside of that surface, which is everything that did not have the correct amount of draft to it. Now, if we do a draft analysis, selecting the front plane as our draft plane, or our direction of pull, uh, we can see here that, yes, it is now green all the way down to the parting edge. There's a little bit of artifacts here um, from the surface cut but most of it is green. And so although we have removed the yellow part, you can see here as I roll it forward, if we mirror all this over, roll it to the end, and do the draft analysis again, we can see that yes, the red sides and the green sides both touch. Um, my only issue with this is one, the part, um, is going to have these flats on it, right? So you're, depending on how much draft you have to apply, like if you're adding uh, a texture onto this or the material or process that you're using it requires a large amount of draft or a high draft angle, um, you're going to be able to feel that on the part pretty noticeably as it transitions from this nice curved surface into this flat surface and then into the parting line where there's the break in tangency. But I think that there's a better way where you can get consistent curvature all the way to the bottom or all the way to the parting line and have it be a little bit cleaner. Now you might be saying uh, or asking yourself, why am I not concerned with this area? Because there's an undercut here um, and this is to create a flat spot, I'm assuming on the product so that it can like sit on the table. Um, because there's an undercut here, this is either gonna be handled in a different part of the mold. Um, so they'll have uh, an action here that seals this off or it's gonna be a bump off and we're not going to be concerned with the fact that the draft is not correct along this bottom feature. So we're primarily focusing on the parting line where the main sphere body comes along. 
All right, so now let's look at a solution that I would recommend in the way that I would probably model it up myself. Um, so this is going to involve surfacing, which I know some people are averse to because it's kind of more complex, but once you get the hang of it and I walk you through this, I think you'll be able to apply it um, in some of your work. So we're gonna start off by just building our normal sketches, right? You can show these sketches, hide the main body, just to clear things up. So these are the two sketches that we're gonna be working off of. Um, so this is just defining like the size and area of the ears. And these two curves here are defining the boundaries of our main body. The first one is relatively simple. This is just a standard sketch. We have splines here, no big deal. We wanna make sure that our top line and our bottom line here are horizontal because when we mirror them over, that'll mean that they are tangent to their mirrored half along this line. The second sketch that we're gonna create is a little bit trickier. So what we want to do is we're just mimicking the shape. We don't have to, but in this case I am. Um, but the key here is if we look at it like this, the key here is that we have the style spline lines that define this curve set up so that at these points, right, the lines that define these points have the correct draft angle applied to them. Okay, so you see that this curve here has three degrees of draft as well as this curve over here or this line over here, right? And that's pretty easy to create when you're going to create your style spline. Or once you've created your style spline, you just go in and apply angle dimensions in relation to the vertical or horizontal. And you can control those. So now we're, we've created two sets of curves, right? We have the first one, which is going to be tangent at this point. And we have our second curve, which is going to have the correct um, draft angle at this point. So next up, we're going to create two extruded surfaces to help us create the um, main body's surface. And what these surfaces are doing, I'll show how we create them. So we're taking, so we're just converting the entity of the sketches that we created earlier, this one here, right? And we're going to extrude that edge or that sketch, right? And this will make sense a little bit later. So we've just extruded the sketch normally. We're gonna make another sketch here, which again is just a uh, convert entities of our base sketch here, right? So it's just this curve right here. And when we go and create this surface, we're going to add draft to it for whatever our draft angle is. And you might have to click this draft inward outward button to get it to go in the correct direction for you. Something to pay attention to. So now we have uh, two surfaces created from our initial sketches. One surface is defining the tangency along our mirrored section, and the other surface is defining the correct draft angle at our parting line, which is this line right here. I have another uh, curve that I built in here as well. This is just going to be uh, to help build in the surface fill feature. At the parting line, we've defined that the angle of the control line for the style spline is set to the correct uh, draft. So now when we go to create our surface fill, what we're going to do is we're gonna select those surfaces that we just created, the blue ones here. We're gonna select those edges like this, and we're gonna apply tangency across all of them. And we're also going to add that uh, third sketch that we created that also has the correct draft on it um, as a constraint curve. And what this, this is going to do is it's going to create a surface that has the correct draft along this edge, but also is tangent along this edge so that when we mirror it over, it's correct and it has the correct draft all the way to the parting line. So now we'll delete out 
the uh, reference surfaces, those ones that we had earlier that were helping to create this. We don't need them anymore. Now we'll just start doing the mirror feature. This is very straightforward, right? So we mirror across, mirror across one way, mirror across the other way. We'll knit everything together. And when we do knit, we're gonna create a solid because we have a watertight group of surfaces. So we can create merge or we can create solid here. So next we're going to uh, create the little flat feature and I'm just using a, result, a revolved surface, then a surface cut, removing the surface, adding in our fillets. All right. Next up, we're doing the ears. You can look at this here. So it's kind of the same thing when you look at the ears, it's just a lot easier because they're axially symmetric, right? So it's the same trick. We're just creating a profile for the ear that already has the correct draft applied to it so that when we revolve it, it's correct. Right, we can mirror that ear, surface knit. Again, when we surface knit, we make it solid. Mirror, get a second ear, combine together. Go in, add some finished cleanup by adding some fillets and shelling out the inside. In case it's gonna be like roto molded or something like that. I think it's a squeaky toy, so that's what I'm going with. All right, so now when we go and apply our draft analysis using our front face to define the pull direction, we can see that the red face and the green face are perfectly together along our parting line. And that's exactly what we want to do. You can see building it with surfaces creates a more robust, controllable, uh, properly shaped model that is going to be useful downstream from us in the process and is adjustable and more aesthetically pleasing. So I hope that this was helpful for you. Uh, if it was, please like the video and subscribe so you can catch future videos and learn along with us. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you have a future project you want us to look at, leave that in the comments as well, as well or reach out to us. And we'll be happy to take a look at it. Um, I thank you guys for watching the video so far. Sorry if it's a little bit rambly. I am out of practice since I have uh, been doing other work, but I'm hoping to get back into this and at least try and do a video a week. So if you have a project you want me to look at, please send it to me. I'd be happy to, uh, to do a video like this for you and help you out. I hope you have a good week and uh, have a great day.